Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today, we are not at Barrett Motors, we are just up the road in Western Supermare, which happens to be the headquarters for mobile eco-tuning. Mobile eco-tuning are one of the biggest and best regarded tuning companies in the country, so we're really lucky to have them just up the road. And when Sai messaged me and said, would I be interested in becoming a remapping agent? I was all over it. Remapping is something I've always wanted to do. I always thought it was a great money earner. I have bought a 380 horsepower Porsche Cayenne 4.2 TDV8 with me, which I'm going to remap myself and we're going to see how much power the car makes beforehand. We'll see how much power it makes afterwards. We should be able to get quite a lot more power at this. I think the figures say something like 450 horsepower. That is one of the huge benefits of working with mobile eco tuning because their maps files are all done based on rolling road tests. They're not just some generic tests. They have been tested for that car. So you're always getting a good file. We're going to get inside. We're going to get the bit of equipment that we need. We're going to get taught how to use it. Stick with us because when it comes to the end, I'll tell you exactly how much all this equipment costs and how you could get one of the limited spaces left with mobile eco tuning to be an agent, basically, to be able to set up a business or add it to your business, remapping and all those kinds of services. If I can do it, you can do it. We'll talk figures at the end, but right now I'm keen to get in there, get this plugged in and unlock a bit more power. Let's go and learn how to remap a car. Yeah, we've done our bit, but we're just spinning the wheel. Spinning the wheel, it takes a while, yeah. It, it does, yeah. It's got a bit Actually, of a wobble. The um, Stage 1 gives an extra 80 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque. It's crazy. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. It's already got 800 newton meters of torque. We'll try not to blow it up on the way back. No, 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 it should be all right. So we've just set up our dealer portal, which is where we're gonna like request maps and all that sort of stuff. What we haven't actually done yet is look at the auto tuner itself. This is the actual bit of kit that is gonna help us connect to the car via the computer and put on the map that we want. It looks very cool, so I'm very excited to get in here. It's even got like a little security tab type thing on. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So this is our actual auto tuner box. Loads of cables, I guess, connect to different cars, different ECUs, power cable. So it's just a USB. That is potentially the coolest USB stick I've ever seen. Cable connector or something. I guess they're going to teach us all of this shortly. But that is the actual bit of kit. So that is that. I still have no idea how to use it. But the car is now in the workshop. It sat there. Potentially, using this box, we can give that Porsche another 80 brake horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque. So I'm, I'm well excited to do this, see what it's like afterwards. We'll get out in the workshop, connect everything up, I guess, and, and learn how it actually works. We need to do a scan on the vehicle first, just to make sure it's got no faults or anything. What scanner have you got out of interest? You got um, something, I'm assuming. We've got an Autel something. I want to say 600, I don't know, God knows. So what I'll do is do a quick scan first, just see what we got in there. Naturally, you're always going to pick some stuff up. It's 4.2, isn't it? Looking pretty clean. There's a few bits, but when we're reading and writing, we always hook up battery support. When we're when it's writing, it is very imperative. Yeah. Reading's not so, but writing is very imperative. We've got battery support on there, so that most people, if they haven't got something like the GYS or something like that, um, a running car is okay. fine, or, or a good charger or something like yeah. that. I guess the whole point of that is you don't want to get halfway through writing a map and then it all. A hundred percent. Now I know when I can write and when I'm not to write. Yeah. But you'll get someone who'll start writing a 330D, which can be an hour's write sometimes, and then it'll be at nine volts, and then it'll corrupt it. Let's get the auto tuner plugged into the OBD. Okay. Assume it was down here. Wasn't paying any attention. All right. Put it there. Yeah, uh, that's fine in there. So we've got ignition on. Um, so what we'll do first, we log into the portal. It'll tell us what ECU it's got and stuff. Okay. So we go into the Met portal. If we go to upload on the left hand side, yeah. uh, and we type the registration in, so that'll bring up there um, potentially what ECU we've got on there, what vehicle it is. So it's a CP44, mm -hmm. and all these tools will do it. Right. So now we know what ECU is on there. So I'll tell you now that CP44 is what they call a virtual read. Anything that's a virtual read will literally take an ID of it and download the software from the server because it can't read the ECU. What that means, if this has got anything on it, like an AdBlue delete or a stage one or anything, right. we'll overwrite it. Yeah. If it's a full read and it fully reads the vehicle, we can see what's been done to it. So anything on this will get written over. The only way to be able to read it is to pull the ECU off and bench it, which would not take you on to as well. So if we go back onto the desktop and start a auto tuner. So on here, we've got cars, bikes, tractors, trucks, jet skis, quads. Um, you get everything with auto tuner. 
Um, you've got ECU and TCU as well. So if you want to do gearboxes and stuff like that. Right. Um, so we're going to click on car, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then here, so you can either press the buttons on the keyboard or shortcut, so you can go through it. So obviously, P, press P for Porsche. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And then obviously, select your model, which is uh, that one. Yeah, so we've already seen on the portal, it said it's a CP44. Um, so that's that's the ECU type. So yep. is this a 382 version, is it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're looking at. So on here, we've got bench, boot and OBD, DTC and data logs. So bench is where we take the ECU out and we do it on the bench. It's very easy to do. Boot is opening the ECU and soldering to it, right. which is very rare we use that now. OBD is exactly what it says. DTD, DTC is a generic scan of DTCs. That's yep. like an OBD scan. Yep. And then data logs um, will give you full data log and facilities. So if we said to you, if you want to tune this for stage two, we want to see what the turbo is doing, what the fuel is doing, we'll say to you, take out, do a data log. All you do is put your auto tuner in, put your laptop in the car with you, click on data logs, go for a drive and click data log. It knows what it, the data we want. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it'll send us all the data. Okay. So it gives you a link and you give us a link and then we've got the data and then we can push it and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so on this one, we're just going to do it OBD. Um, so if we identify the ECU, should pull it up. So there, so it's, so this is the twin ECU version. So it's going to write both ECUs. Um, so double the risk. <laughs> That's what we like. It's identified that it's a CP44. Um, this is the serial number on it, the software number on it, and the engine code on it. Um, and it's saying the original file is on the server, so it is there ready to go. So if we do a read of the ECU, okay. it's telling you it's a virtual read. So yeah, yeah we we'll do a virtual read on it. Okay. And then just save it to wherever, documents, yeah. But we'll download it from the server now. When you say the server, is that like the server physically on this car or like Porsche's also, server? Auto Tuner server. Ah, so what okay. Auto Tuner have done is they've taken all of the genuine Porsche files yep. and turned them into a binary like format. A, like a database so one. yeah, so you can't physically read the CCU for OBD because of tuning protection. Um, but what you can do is you can write. Um, so as long as we've got the software version and the software version's correct and we've got that on a server somewhere, we'll download it from the server and we can write it. Got you. Um, so it shows you where the ECU saved the contents of it. Yeah. And this is the file hash, which is fine. Um, so if we go back to the portal, we can then fill out the details. So if we scroll down, yeah. Um, so we can click on it's an ECU file we're doing, um, and then ECU type, which is an EDC seventeen CP forty four. EDC seventeen CP forty four. Um, it's automatic and then select tool, which is an auto tuner OBD. So then this is where we choose what we want. So obviously we've got no tuning. So if we click no tuning, we've got various different things on there. These are your figures. Um, yeah. So 382 to 450, 850 to 950 Newton meters of torque. We generally with files, we're anywhere between two to three minutes up to, we say up to an hour, but the chances of us taking an hour to do a file is slim to none. Yeah. If it's something we've never seen before, it, it can take up to sort of half an hour. Um, but generally, we try and get them back within 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Under, um, under promise and over deliver. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we like to do. So, so is that, are that all done here? Kieran's doing it through in, there. In the office, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and when, it, when it's very busy, we both jump on it. Um, so everything's done in-house. Yeah. Uh, we don't outsource anything. So you can come through and see if you want. What does all this mean? Because we're looking at it and it looks like it's something out of the matrix. So this, this is all, when you've got definition files, there's no definitions on there. Um, so we don't need definitions on this because we've already made it from a definition. Um, but you've got like torque limiters, boost pressure limiters, stuff like that. So okay. all, all of these, so you see the reds there increases on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, like I say, we've got no definitions made up for this, but have you got someone with definitions just to bring them up a minute? Yeah, if you send that back. So now he's sent that back, so you should get a message on your okay. phone. So all, all these definitions are on the side, so everything that looks squiggly and stuff like that, um, you define them. Well, you can see the amount of information you've got on there. But as long as you've got definitions, you can build from the definition. It's all defined to something that means something. But when you've already made something up, you can bring them changes across without defining it every single time. You can sit there with one of them definitions and you can adjust everything that you know you need to adjust. 
boost, torque, everything else. Well, the beauty is, for someone like a complete monkey like me, I can just plug it in, yeah. and you guys know what you're doing, <laughs> and that's reassuring, because I haven't got to. a clue. <laughs> so if it thinks there's somebody sat there, and the seatbelt's on, the ignition's on, uh, and the hazards are on, on any vehicle that's keyless, it'll stop it from going to sleep. BMWs, the old push ones, they switch off after about two or three minutes. So if you start writing, two or three minutes, the ignition turns off, you've then got to recover it. How sort of, I suppose it tells us there, I have no idea what 2,000 gigabytes is. What's that like in comparison to a gig? I'm just thinking, say, if you're using mobile data, if you're out and about. Oh yeah, minutes. absolutely fine. So, so the actual file size on the other end is four, uh, four meg. Right. But because it's encrypted, it compresses it down and encrypts it. 2,000 kilo is 2 meg. When it's decompressed, it's actually 4, so it's actually half the size. Like most people use their phone data. So the auto does need to be online with internet connection to work, because it, it uses online, so you've got to have decent internet connection. We know we've got 13.4 volts, so we're good to start programming. If you think this vehicle is tuned, mm -hmm. and it's coming to your garage, and you think, I might have a tune on this, we don't need to get involved in this side of things because this is actually giving you the option to write the software from the server, okay. which is saying it's going to write an original file to it without our input whatsoever. Right. So if you think this was tuned, all you've got to do is hit that button and then you know it's not tuned. Yeah. And then when you start getting ad blue faults and stuff like that, yeah, you yeah. know that it was tuned. For most people, you probably don't get it, but for me as a car dealer, if a car comes in, I think, oh, this is boosty, this has definitely yeah. been tuned and I don't want to sell it like yeah. that. I could put it back to standard. Yep. And this is only on the VAG group and some BMWs, but this is a pr pretty good demonstration, to be fair. This is equivalent of going into Porsche and asking Porsche to update it. This is where you find out it had a stage two on it before. And yeah, I know. And it's yeah. now not. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll write the two ECUs. You've got a left and a right slave. Obviously, there's not very many cars with two ECUs. Uh, even that Audi there on a V8 has only got one ECU. Um, it's just these have. And I probably shouldn't say, but in the very early days, these used to fall over quite easy and we used to have to recover them. So this is good because what this means is this has never been written via OBD. Okay. So the fact it's not been unlocked means this tool now needs to unlock it to write it. So that tells us one thing mainly that hasn't been written OBD. Doesn't mean it hasn't been written on a bench, but okay. it does mean it hasn't been written OBD. Yeah, which is probably going to be the most common way that, people would do it, 100%. right? 100%. So that's that's a good thing for this. So that's it. You can see on here and on there, and it's flashing the blocks. And I know it's going to be a case of like, how long is a piece of rope, but string, whatever the saying is. How what What's the general? So it's I, I think on this is probably a 20 minute um, total process okay. for writing back. If you get a Ford Transit like that with a SID 208 ECU, it's about six or seven seconds. Really? Yeah. If you get something like a BMW with an EDC 16 on there, it can be 45 minutes. Right. General rule of thumb, writing back is sort of three to four minutes. Okay. Yeah, general, like there's not much that is much longer than that. If we get in, for example, an M3 or a 335i and it's got an, e an ECU we call an MSD80, they're actually like an hour and 10 minute write yeah. and they're about an hour read. We just pull the ECU out because you can read and write it on the bench in 10 minutes and right. you can pull it out in five minutes. Okay. So the fact that the, the fact that it takes five minutes to pull it out, it's just easier to get it in yeah. and out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how we do it. Um, I think this scale, if I remember right, is taking into consideration both ECUs. Okay. So I think it'll stop halfway through and then go on to the second ECU. Yes, yeah, as simple as that. Um, what we say is don't sit inside and do it on your lap because you'll want to get out and then as you get out, you'll kick the OBD yeah, socket out yeah. and then you'll brick it. Um, the chances of bricking these days are very slim, but we, for our agents, if anything goes wrong, we've got full dealer kits. Um, so we've got genuine dealer kits with security accreditation. If something goes wrong with a vehicle, we'll literally get the dealer kit and we send it in the post to them. And then we log on to the dealer kit and we do it for them. And that's, that's why we've got the team. When people are mapping, the question of quality of files and time and price don't come before um, the support, people want support and that's why we built the team we've built. Yeah, and, that, and that's what we sort of pride ourselves on. Um, there's a lot of people leave people hanging. We've had so many scare stories and stuff of people leaving transit vans in service stations dead and stuff like yeah. that. Um, in Gordano services, we had to have a camper van recovered to us because they were going on holiday and they'd uh, organised the tuner to come from Wales and meet him at Gordano to tune it. He bricked it, 
said he forgot something, he needs to go and get it, and then disappeared. No way. They waited there four hours and then gave us a call and they brought it down and recovered it for him. But yeah, they were literally going on their hollow to call and they disappeared. I think he said he was going to Halfords to get um, a jump leads or something like that and he just yeah, never yeah. turned up again. I think we seem to be selling to car dealers more than normal people at the moment. It's because there's no way they want to be putting cars out tuned. You know, you sell an RS6 like that and it's tuned to an inch of its life. Next yeah. thing, popping turbos and stuff. Where does it lie? It lies, lies with you, so. Yeah, 100%, and yeah. so many people are doing it on their cars now, and it's hard to tell, because the cars are powerful anyway these days, and you put a bit more through them, yeah. it would be peace of mind to, you know, yeah. then then, you, then say you use a third party warranty or something, and they find out it's been yeah. mapped, they're just gonna say no, aren't they? And 100%, on, on the flip of that, once you see that we don't push stuff to the absolute limits, some of our figures are probably stronger than others, but the majority of our figures are pretty average, um, because we don't push stuff to an inch of its life. If a customer comes to us and says, you know, I want this pushed, we'll push it, no problem. I'd rather have cars with good power out there and it not blowing up. Yeah, still on the road. You know, so uh, again, so you could offer your customers, if your customers, you know, you, you've got an M3 in, and your customer's like, oh, I really want to get it mapped or something like that, then, you know, you can say, we got a good supplier, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather we did it, then you take it away and do it, yeah, you know? Yeah, um, it. And at least you know what you're putting on there is something you've put on there that you'd put on yourself. Yeah, it's not something ridiculous. And the other thing is as well, we've had vehicles come from car dealers that are faulting and doing weird stuff with no codes. And then we've read the file off it and they've deleted camshaft timing codes and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for you, being able to make sure that a vehicle's going out of stock is, is you know, it's pretty good. Can we stop talking now? Yeah. <laughs> First time firing this up since I've remapped this myself. It sounds the same. I'm very much looking forward to trying this out. There should be quite a noticeable difference. Another 70 horsepower from this thing. So it's gone from 382 to 450. Even though it was already a lot of horsepower, it should still be quite obvious the difference. We're just gonna have to find somewhere we can actually try it out. I can't remember which way we came in. Oh! That's definitely... That is definitely a lot quicker. That is great. That is crazy. We only went like 20 miles an hour then. We can just tell it was just like off. Should we put it into, oh, we are in a, already in a low. Let's put it in normal mode for a start so it doesn't just lift the suspension up. And then let's go. All right, ready then, we'll just. I think it was almost trying to wheel spin over the bumps. The other thing as well, they said we could do like gearbox tunes as well. So I wonder if we could like speed up the gearbox on this. Not that it's bad, but. No, it's in normal mode, suspension wise. Oh yeah, there is a, oh yeah. There's a sport pattern for throttle. I mean, we haven't even experienced the standard throttle yet. Never mind. Check out the Fiat Coupe. I think it even sounds a bit better. I can't imagine the frustration of just having remapped your car to 450 horsepower and now you're sat in traffic. <laughs> remap tools like the smile makers that was really cringe but jesus how ripped do you want your jeans they're flapping about right <laughs> wow i'm actually surprised i thought it was going to be quicker but holy moly Decent. Let's try sport mode this time. Oh, it's, it automatically puts it in lower suspension. Oh, like sniffer <laughs> suspension. Wow. How does it feel uh, in the passenger seat? Yeah, I feel sick. <laughs> 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 
Sorry, Jason. We've made Jason feel sick. That's that's all the testimony you need, really. Well, there you have it. It took me all about half an hour to learn how to do this. I've given my car an extra 70 horsepower and 100 newton meters of torque. It hasn't blown up. It hasn't given us a load of faults. And we're fairly confident this is the first time this has ever been mapped. So what with them giving us a impressive but sensible map, I couldn't be happier really. So that is the type of results you get from remapping as well as doing function deletes and things like that. We'll head back, we'll grab our equipment so we can carry on doing that. I'm probably just gonna remap every car at Barra Motors to be honest. I'll explain how much it costs to get set up, how much it costs for a map and how much money you can potentially make by doing remaps. So see you when we get back to mobile eco tuning. Right, so that is it. We've remapped the Porsche. It drives absolutely amazing. We've got all of our stuff here, which I think what we'll do is the guys have actually really helped us out. They have given us some kind of signage we can put up at the garage as well. So let's get back, get our new signage up, letting people know that we can now remap cars. And I will talk you through all the figures and kind of explain how this could be a business for you. So we'll see you back at Barra Motors. I've got my remapping sign up and we are going to talk through the kind of costs and values and numbers, basically. So. The most important thing, the auto tuner. How much is this piece of kit? Everything you get in here, in fact, not just everything you get in here. Let me put this down, I'll show you. It came with a lovely little kit. Look at this. Comes with sunglasses, key ring, pen, and a welcome guide as well. You can't really argue with that. Um, so everything we saw in there, we've got the auto tuner, all the cables, all that sort of stuff. 2,400 pounds plus VAT, which, it's going to sound like a lot of money to some people, but to me, I think that sounds quite cheap. You think about how much money you could make from this bit of kit in comparison to something of a similar value, like our air conditioning machine, for example, which is only really useful through summer. This has got a lot more potential to earn money. Other than having your auto tuner, all you really need is something to support the battery. So you could, simple as uh, jump leads with another car that's running to make sure that was going the whole time, or you can get a decent battery charger or something along those lines and you will need a laptop. This is where we sort of come a cropper because I brought my MacBook and it doesn't work on a MacBook. You do need a Windows laptop. Luckily, the guys do provide laptops if you need them. These are just kind of reconditioned units. Actually, quite a nice little ThinkPad. It looks brand new to me, but apparently they're reconditioned uh, and they're 250 quid. So not a lot of money either for something that's gonna help you do all this stuff. So that is essentially all of your hardware costs let's say 2,650 quid plus VAT. Not a huge amount really to basically have a set up business because you get all the support you need and all that sort of stuff. Then it's just the cost of the maps and kind of the support and things like that. So you get your dealer portal, which I'm on here. I'm about to add some more credit. You basically buy credit, which will allow you to buy maps to do feature deletes on cars, things like that. Stage one remap is gonna cost you 71 pounds plus VAT. Now, the guys at Mobile Eco Tune in Western, they sell their maps for someone just walking in off the street, £200 plus VAT for a map. But I know a lot of people are charging a lot more than that, especially if you're mobile. I guess there's additional costs. If you're setting this up and you're pre-VAT registered, you would be charging people, let's say, £250 for a remap, and your costs, including the VAT for the map, uh, would be £85, which means, roughly speaking, you can have £165 of margin on doing a remap for someone and it's one of those cool kind of products where you do it for someone and like me getting in that Porsche afterwards and driving it and seeing how much more powerful it was it's like you're putting a smile on people's face it's quite a nice product to be selling and it's kind of a low stress low skill kind of low mess thing to do it's not like taking a gearbox out of a car this is quite a simple thing so it's a really nice thing for me to bolt on to our business. I think that is a great thing, but the main reason that we are doing this is because it helps us make sure that cars have got standard maps. The more we get into performance and prestige cars, we wanna make sure those cars are standard. They're gonna be a car that we're gonna to want to warrant and they're not gonna have you know big crazy remaps on them or someone else's horrible remap, but we still will be able to offer those services and make a profit on it. So if you're interested in doing vehicle remapping, then do check out Mobile Eco Tuning. I'll put a link in the description, let them know that Joe sent you, and hopefully they will do you a really good deal, get you set up really quickly. They can even sort all your training remotely via Team Viewer, get it all set up for you, and the guys there are really helpful. They've got loads of support. I wouldn't want to do this on other people's cars if I didn't have the support of Mobile Eco Tuning there. So 
Uh, yeah, highly recommend. It's been a great fun day. And in fact, as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to add more credits to my account and I'm going to remap our uh, Land Rover L322, try and get some more power out of that big diesel V8 because I've been so impressed with how it was on that Cayenne. So that is it for this video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe if you haven't already. As soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers, we are giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch. Completely free. You've just got to be in it to win it. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button. There'll be future videos coming. We're remapping. And we were also speaking to them about some of their DPF cleaning machines as well, because I'm going through a lot of DPFs with all the Ingeniums I'm selling, and they have got a very, very cool bit of kit there for that. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next video.